Encountering an unconscious or unresponsive person is a frightening experience. Please determine your safety before taking any specific actions. After you do so, we want you to be able to determine whether the person is breathing and whether or not they have a pulse. Early activation of the 911 system is vitally important as these resources are on their way while you're taking critical life-saving actions. Cardiac arrest is a sudden stop of the ability for the heart to pump blood. Um, it can occur for a variety of reasons, most commonly related to underlying heart disease, such as in someone who's suffering a large heart attack. It can also occur in folks who have underlying structural and congenital problems that they may be born with of the heart. And then in rare cases, can be related to blunt uh, trauma to the chest where you're sort of hitting the chest that can cause a fatal rhythm. Signs of cardiac arrest can be difficult because there's lots of reasons that somebody may pass out and lose consciousness. Um, but the most important thing uh, when you uh, come on to somebody who's unconscious is to check their pulse, which can be done simply by checking the carotid pulse in an adult in the neck and looking for other signs of breathing. Is their chest wall moving? Are they having any signs of a breathing pattern uh, that can be identified? Um, and with lack of those two, these folks are more likely to be in cardiac arrest. We want to be calling for 911 as soon as possible um, and asking for an AED to be brought to you or grabbing the AED if it's in a locale close to you. AED stands for an Automated External Defibrillator. It's similar to what we are using in the hospital setting when we give somebody shocks to restart the heart. This was made for lay people to be using commonly seen now in exercise gyms and airports and restaurants and athletic trainers at sporting events have these. And they're basically meant to have the layperson be able to apply pads and deliver that electricity, similar to what we would be doing with defibrillation in the hospital setting, right at the point of care. But most of the time when cardiac arrest occurs, it's from an electrical disturbance in the heart and a fatal heart rhythm. And the sooner we get this person defibrillated, the better their chances of surviving. The longer time goes on without electricity, the worse these patients generally do. If indeed there's no pulse, then immediately we're gonna be starting CPR, or cardiopulmonary resuscitation. That is how we use our hands to restart blood flow and increase blood flow to that important heart muscle and the vasculature around the heart in an effort to get that heart restarted and then pump blood to the rest of our body to restore some of those vital functions, get blood flow back to our brain and our important uh, body organs. All right, so we come on Mr. Jones, who we found down, unresponsive, not moving. I shake. Mr. Jones, can you hear me? Can you hear me? No response. I'm gonna to slide to the lateral portion of his neck at the area of the carotid. No more than 10 seconds feeling for that pulse. I don't feel a pulse. So at this point, I'm gonna call for 911. I'm gonna have someone bring me an AED and I'm gonna start CPR. So if you happen to have a uh, more than one person, that is the best plan of action here. One person would immediately start CPR while the other person is getting the AED ready. Otherwise, I'm gonna assume that I'm alone here, so I'm getting my AED ready. I open up the box that contains it. Um, I pre press the on button, and now the machine will talk you through all the actual steps. I put my connector into the blinking hole, and I apply my pads. The pads are marked, upper and lower chest. I put my pads connected. Shock advised. Charging. The machine will charge. At this point, we're going to keep our hands off. Deliver shock now. We're all clear. Shock delivered, and I immediately start CPR. For this adult patient, I'm going to be trying to aim for 100 to 120 compressions a minute, allowing proper press down and allowing recoil of the chest, as my goal is to squeeze that hard in between those hands to increase the blood flow to my body, especially my brain. If I have somebody with me that can do rescue breathing, um, I would be doing 30 of these compressions to two breaths. Generally, we work in cycles of two minutes 
or five cycles. Um, and at that point, my AED will come back on. It'll reanalyze the rhythm. I'll take my hands off. And if indeed another shock is indicated, I would press the button on the machine to deliver that shock to the patient and continue with the cycle um, until EMS arrives.